Okay, so I'm going to attempt to explain this sufficiently. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm is uh, I came up with this idea to build an alternator um, or to take an alternator off of uh, to take any alternator and to convert it into a something that's usable for wind power um, without a great expense. Now there's a lot of guys on the internet that are taking the uh, the rotors out and just simply replacing them with a neodymium magnet rotor, a permanent magnet. Rotor. There we are, and um, and those seem to work pretty good. Um, I've taken a little bit different approach here. The neodymium magnets that are large enough to actually run a permanent magnet alternator uh, do wind up costing around seventy-five to a hundred dollars for the rotor. Um, so I've come up with this idea to cheapen it even more than that, just to take a junk alternator and and basically transform it. Uh, so if you look carefully, you'll see these little round. Well, what they are is I've actually taken magnets, uh, and these are really small neodymium magnets. I bought a hundred of these babies. They're like eighth inch by a quarter inch by eighth inch or something like that. They're pretty small. I don't remember the exact size. Anyways, I've taken and I marked out um, the exact location of where these should be and uh, I've actually drilled quarter inch holes that were just a little deeper and these magnets are thick and then I've epoxied in these magnets um, with you know north and south poles respectively. Now this was tricky because on these slip rings is where you are going to apply your power as well and you have to determine which pole is north and which pole is south so I think I figured the inside ring or was it the outside now nah, well anyways this is something research you'll have to do on your own but and you know you can change it as well uh, you can decide which one's going to be negative which one's going to be positive but I think I determined the inside one was a positive um, uh, was positive and this one was negative and so that once I energized it I just took a battery charger as you can see here hooked up the uh, let me see here let's get this baby plugged in sorry about the holding the phone in one hand and trying to do everything with the other hand it is awkward. Okay, you see the little spark there? Now watch what happens. When I apply power to that slip ring, boom, just like that, it really sucks it down. Okay, you take that off, and of course, now there is some magnetism there because, like I said, I've glued these magnets in there, and I'll tell you why. Um, by itself, this thing is not, I mean, it has to have power applied to these two brushes before it begins to make power. And that doesn't lend itself to wind power because you don't want to have these things hooked up draining your batteries while you're waiting for a wind to come up. So, um, so by taking these magnets and placing them in there, um, I've created something that will begin to make a small amount of electricity. Okay, let's go back to this. And with, once those small magnets begin to spin around the stator, um, they're gonna create a little bit of current, not much. At about 500 RPMs, it only creates about three volts, which is enough because that three volts is translated at three phase through the back of the alternator. And then I've taken the three phase power um, and I've brought it into a bridge rectifier and bring in my positive. Um, this is my negative. I'd bring in my negative. I'd ground it out to the, to the, uh, to the housing here. And then I bring my positive over here, um, to the field. And so that 
effectively what it does is as this begins to spin, it creates about three volts of power, which is then sent to the rectifier, which is then sent to um, the slip rings, energizes this, begins to energize this magnet, which it goes from, you know, three volts gives it maybe not that much magnetism, but more than it has here, which then increases the magnetic flux and it increases the voltage and it continues to do that until um, until you reach battery voltage. So, and I found that to be at right around 500 RPM and then it holds it, the battery voltage, at 12 volts we're talking here. This is actually a 24 volt alternator with, um, and so this is also, this, this is actually wired 40 amps. Um, it's a 12 SI alternator, um, 24 volt, 40 amp. And I haven't changed any of the wiring here, but I can manage to get um, a charging voltage of, you know, 12.6 to 13 volts at about 500 RPM approximately. So anyways, I've taken all the guts out of it. Um, they didn't work anyways, because I think I burned up the, the old diode set setup that was in here before. This was actually a self exciting alternator set here it's easier to see these diodes were actually for the um, slip rings to energize the slip rings I could have reused these but this was burnt out um, these were burnt out so everything just got way too hot I was running a had this alternator on a 6 volt motor and it was actually charging a 24 volt battery array that I had in my house and it's a pretty big array so it was asking a lot out of this but as you can see I have my positive voltage here okay that's coming from my field current and I just jumped a little wire from here to there um, and this feeds this brush which um, becomes the inside on this if you can picture the way this goes in it's going to go in just like that okay and so the outermost brush that you're looking at here is going to energize the inner slip ring on the rotor um, and the slip ring underneath uh, I did a continuity test and I discovered that this um, matched up um, or gave me continuity between this screw and the bottom brush so I just merely just grounded that out there was a little plastic washer on there I took the plastic washer out that screw just goes through the back of the casing and effectively grounds it out and so when you come back here you have um, your negative and your positive from your bridge rectifier um, and then your three-phase power coming in here I hope this is all becoming clear um, probably not the best explaining things here but at any rate i'm going to put this thing together um and then i'll kind of show you some voltages okay so got it all back together all right um you know something i forgot to mention is uh if you go back on my video you'll notice two rows of magnets that were offset a little because when I stuck the first row in there, it was enough to excite it, but it had a little bit of a cog to it. So I stuck the second magnet in and offset it um, by a few degrees, um, and there doesn't seem to be any cogging, um, and it spins fairly free. About the only friction that I can tell is uh, the friction on the slip rings. And I have an alternator similar to this that I will post in a later video that actually shows this thing in action on my wind generator um magnet so with that being said let me see if we can get some readings here so i'll put that on dc current and i'm gonna have to hold the phone awkwardly with one hand and the
There you can see the voltage. Now watch carefully and listen to the pitch on the drill as well. Uh, the drill is a 1000 RPM drill and about halfway through the RPMs you're going to kind of you're going to see this thing kick in and you're going to hear it slow down a little bit too as the uh, center coil is energized. So right there. Right there it's been energized. There's our charging voltage. Now I'm going to go full speed. Okay, so there we have it.